do a serious one. Yeah, yeah. So joining you live from the World Championship 2023 in Barcelona, the Living Legend Podcast. No, hey, the, the next podcast will be the spicy one, right? This one is, I have no idea what we're going to talk about this one uh, on, this, on this episode, but on the next episode, I, I imagine we'll have a ton of like news to talk about from PTLA. Um, mm-hmm. I, I imagine they're going to spoil one of the heroes. I imagine, we can talk about this on the podcast, actually, like what we expect yeah. from, from PTLA, because there's not much else other than the weird Dragon Ball looking symbol that they... <laughs> The, the three the, the yeah. three star Dragon Ball, yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> whether intentional or not, that's the first thing I thought of when they when they posted it. I'm like, uh, bros, yeah. three is a blue three star Dragon Ball. That's that's what that is. Um, I mean, to me, that that screams blue illusionist. <laughs> yeah, illusionist. Blusionist. Uh, Blusionist. Uh, so I, I am recording, by the way. If you guys want to just jump in. Blusionist. Um, How's it going, everyone? And welcome back to the Living Legends Podcast, your weekly source of flesh and blood uh, tomfoolery. My name is Kel, also known as Red Zone Rogue. And today, we're, I'm not sure what we're talking about, but I am joined by two excellent gentlemen here. Um, yeah, two two blusionists. Well, we got one blusionist and then a blanger. Um, <laughs> let's go to the blusionist <laughs> yeah, first. How, how are you doing, Bill? I am doing quite well. Uh, thank you for having me back. I know I was away last week, but uh, I'm back in full force. Uh, Absolutely. And uh, just having a good time. Have like a really busy week coming up too, but uh, you know, you always got to make time for the for the homies, for the <laughs> living Absolutely. legends podcast yeah uh mm. and it sounds like we'll have a ton to talk about <laughs> there's I, currently every, lots every, going on every time we said this and there was even a comment on a previous episode they're like they said they had nothing to talk about proceed to talk for an hour and 50 minutes um yep. so we'll, we'll see sounds about right we'll see. and it's um, gonna pure ll pod fashion yeah and uh the the that that blanger that you just heard is is as mm-hmm. uh, how you doing as yeah, I'm doing uh, doing well. I mean, uh, again, there's a there's a couple of cryptic things that have come from the mothership this week as what what we can discuss today and what we think what 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 will come out of PTLA perhaps as well. Um, but yeah, we got some we got some stuff we can, we can cook for a little bit at least today. But yeah, yeah. I'm as from going in gaming. Yeah, I, that's right. Today is going to be like a bunch of like rampant speculation with absolutely no basis other than hey, it looks like this. Um, so it'll Pretty be much. fun. It'll be fun. Uh, before we get to that, um, I guess we could talk about our weeks in Flesh and Blood. Mine's pretty short. Uh, I didn't really do much this week for Flesh and Blood. I uh, did a bunch of other stuff for my channel. Returned an old card game uh, to to content that uh, I haven't covered in like a year. Uh, got really, really good feedback. It was very heartwarming, so that was great. But not really anything in, in Flesh and Blood. How about uh, Bill? We'll go Bill first. How about you, man? So surprisingly, um, I played a couple games of Flesh and Blood in the past Ooh. week. <laughs> um, nice. It's it's kind of funny too because they are essentially pre-constructed decks mm. that, uh, for the Welcome to Wraith heroes, except they are specifically not the Welcome to Wraith precons. And apparently, I made them at some point. Um, <laughs> oh. yeah, I sure. I got them back from uh, from a friend of mine because uh, he was like, "Yeah, I'm not going to play anymore." it came in this box and he's just like yeah there's there's these decks that you made and it's like what and i'm looking at all of them and they have like random like one-off foils of cards and like uh the welcome to wraith and arcane rising set codes and everything so i'm like when did i make these <laughs> when did this? <laughs> so we were playing with them and i was just like yeah i mean katsu is still katsu um and uh yeah. yeah it ended up being a good time shout out uh to my friend carly and uh carly and i were playing flesh and blood in like little pre-constructed decks and it was great <laughs> kadachi for one nice. kadachi for one and then kadachi again for one <laughs> yeah kadachi for one kadachi for one flying kick or whatever classic well yeah. so these decks weren't the ones that kaylee made then they were ones you apparently made for your for your friend is that right yeah, no, these, again, I got them from uh, Jan, who's also a spike feeder, um, mm. back when I purchased his collection. I think I mentioned that I did that. Um, yeah. Because he just, like, has, he has two children and no time. Um, 
yeah. uh, to play to play Flesh and Blood anymore. So I bought his collection, and in that was this box of these pre-constructed decks. And he specifically said to me, like, "Oh, by the way, there are these pre these like uh, decks that you made, these intro decks, um, and uh, they're in this box." And I looked at them, and, like, I genuinely do not remember making these. <laughs> <But> <laughs> They still worked, uh, and they were like slight upgrades to uh, what what Carly was using for their uh, Dorinthia deck. So nice, oh, nice. It all worked out. <laughs> Very <stuff>. cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, sounds sounds great. How about you, As? What uh, what have you been up to? I I can probably guess, but uh, go for it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the the league that means nothing is uh, is in full swing. Um, when we're recording this, it's a bit of a week off because there's uh, I just did a week two update um, for for the league, and then obviously there's no content coming out uh, during PT uh, PTLA weekend, which obviously we'll speak about in a, in a bit. Um, but um, when that's finished, it's all going to return again for the round threes. Um, so, uh, so yeah, still going to be putting putting those together. Uh, I've got me and my friend Tom, who runs an LGS known as Big Boss Book Club. I think you went on his podcast once, Cal. Yeah, he's a nice dude. Um, yeah, he's a nice guy. Uh, he runs an LGS, and he's going to be casting two games with me next week. And then I still have to find some other people to do the other three games, um, which are going to be due out. But Bill... Uh, and uh, Jay did some casting, and that was that was great to uh, to edit, and because you were just having a whale of a time uh, <laughs> figuring out so what the cards fun, were. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was awesome to to get those videos back with you and Jay, and Jay did a nice job of of doing it because obviously there was a green screen behind him. It was you and him in the same room as well, opening up the video. Um, so yeah, I think he did a really good job on that. So Jay, for listening to this, good job. Um, good, good job. Yeah. He probably is because he, like I mentioned a little while ago, he finally caught back up to uh, to mm-hmm. recent, uh, nice. Le- living legend podcast stuff. So we uh, yeah, well. speaking of the podcast, I haven't mentioned this at all, but we're like we're approaching episode 100. Actually, uh, we're oh in the God. we're in the 90s now, like mid low 90s. So we're getting there. Wow. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do for episode 100, but I'll think about something. We'll, we'll think about it. Let us know if you if you would like us to do something special for episode 100, and you have a cool idea. Let us know in the comment down below. Comments plural. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can maybe we can each give away something or do something like that. Or um, but yeah, leave a comment section below as to what what you'd like to see. That'd be great. I know I know we've done live streams in the past. I know we've done lots of different things in the past. So yeah, just let us know what you want to do. Um, but yeah. Loving Flesh and Blood at the moment because I just get to see a lot of it, like especially because I get to I'm doing a lot of edited gameplay videos now, so I get to see and engage with the game on a week to week basis and witness and commentate on heroes I don't necessarily get to play or watch or engage with that often. Like one hero that I really really like the look of at the moment is Dorinthia because of Master Set Madness. Um, I think um, he's a content creator. There's a lot of box opening sort of stuff. Um, is piloting Dorinthia and just doing absolutely incredible things with it. So, uh, so yeah, I got a Dorinthia match to do next next week. Uh, when this, yeah, next week, I'm trying to figure the timings and the time zone recently changed as well. That was that was quite strange to try and organize today's podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, I oh, an hour early. What? I didn't realize this until last week when I was scheduling a collaboration with. Um, my Shadowverse Evolve Worlds co-caster Ignidius, he and I are going to do some cool stuff. And uh, he's from uh, Indonesia. And uh, I didn't realize that, one, Daylight Savings had happened. And two, it didn't happen for him. Uh, it only happened for me in, the, in this situation. Yeah. And so, like, we were trying to schedule. I'm like, hey, I'm ready to go. And he's like, bro, it's still, like, 8 a.m. here. And I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, yeah we the time, we were, like, an hour off because of it. Um, so, Daylight Savings. Yeah, it's enormous. It's stupid. So normally we'd be we'd be starting around about now on a normal thing for me, but it's all right for me because it's a little bit earlier, so I don't have to stay up as late. But um, it only lasts for like two weeks because we have so England goes forward an hour in a couple of weeks' time, so then it'd be back to normal again. So there's always this this period of time where there's an hour difference. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Something about Dorinthia being cool. Um, but I do um, like Dorinthia. Yeah, War- Warriors Valor. Warriors Valor is a great card. You know, the one that says it gives you plus one, two, or three, and if it hits, the attack gains go again. Especially yes. in Dorin- 
especially in Dorinthia, because you're putting up, you're putting your bets up front, aren't you? That your thing's going to hit, similar to a wager almost. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was that's one card that in the next game that I'm going to be commentating next week is a very standout card. Um, Warriors Valor, um, the yellow and red ones. But yeah, just love seeing love seeing new heroes being played and get to do a lot of it at the moment. So yeah, my weeks in Flesh and Blood are quite active. Um, going forward this year and I didn't think they would be yeah it's kind of like what am I going to do this year you know I was I was sort of on the fence as to what I was going to do but regular gameplay videos seem to be what's doing well at the moment and uh, there will be a season two as well for the league that means nothing so anybody listening to this that wants to get involved all you need is a webcam pointing down and then a decent microphone for your opponent to hear you and then we just cast over the top of it at a later stage um so a little plug for that season two that is definitely going to happen maybe with giveaways or something but i still want it to mean nothing because you know we've had this discussion before where as soon as you start adding things to a tournament that you organize you then start to get the the grinders you know whereas at the moment everyone pretty much knows that it is just for nothing it's just for fun right um yeah i uh i might i might join you for for season two It'd give me a good, yeah. you know, good good excuse to play some uh, Flesh and Blood. Because I think currently for me personally right now, I'm kind of just in like news mode. Um, I have my Uzuri deck. I have a couple other decks as well. But um, the last three sets weren't like super exciting for me. And I'm just kind of like in, I'm just kind of in news mode. So just kind of waiting on, waiting on stuff, both in content and just, just in my, you know, Flesh and Blood day-to-day activity. So uh, I think joining the yeah. league would be fun. A fun way to to play, so yeah, yeah. It's a nice way. It's a nice way to engage with it on a on a regular basis. That's what I found, at least. Um, even though I'm I'm still playing Azalea, but because I'm editing it as well and doing a bit of casting here and there, and you guys have done it as well. Um, you know, I might even invite you to do it again, all over again. We got a couple of weeks <laughs> left. So. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty cool. It's a good way to do it. And also, you you know, it's not like a stream. It's not like a live stream where you have to be on. Um, you have to be on online doing it at the exact same time, etc. You just organize you organize the best time between yourself and your opponent. You play it in your own time, and then we edit it afterwards. But that's going into the deep lore of Go Again Gaming. Let's not do that today. Um, <laughs> we got other interesting things to speak about. I I think unless there's anything else in this week. I mean, ba- no, I think we can we can move on to the Pro Tour stuff. That's basically like the, yeah. the biggest news coming out of Flesh and Blood right now is uh, PTLA. There's folks flying all around from, from uh, the world to attend PTLA. Um, I'm very curious to see the how, how big the turnout is going to be. Um, but uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting. I think the most interesting thing for folks who are not competitive players and who are not competing in the event and have no stakes in like who, who wins or whatever... Um, is that uh, there's, we're very likely to get some nice reveals from um, yeah. Part the Mist Veil, at least some teasers, uh, as well as there's like a dev inner dev chat with uh, Brian and James, um, and they also did like a like a merch, uh, like a merch drop uh, for 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 the pro tour. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess we can start with the merch drop because that's the that's just kind of just one of the things that we know exactly what it is um so let me see if i can yeah, find it I, of... I did not i'm not prepared for it let me let me go look yeah there's a couple of cool couple of cool bits in there i mean they've they've got the um the lss hoodie they've got that there now the ones that were available at barcelona but they've got some specific ptla stuff the vincet things there as well the vincet t-shirt but i think there's a couple of other unique bits to this as well but i've seen what's what's everyone's opinion on what's everyone's opinion on just making this available through purchase on a website should, should 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 or should they not just do that do you think or are they trying to make it limited what's your what's your thoughts bill i know i was about to say something there i think they are trying to make it like scarce mm. maybe because they don't necessarily have the like infrastructure to do it that would yeah, be my maybe. my only guess as to why they wouldn't do this because yeah like i otherwise i feel like this would sell like hotcakes like I think it would be the easiest Absolutely. thing in the world for them to sell all of these all the time because people want flesh and blood merch and flesh and blood blood merch doesn't currently exist uh, unless it's like unofficial stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think they know that it's like really 
in high demand, but I just, I think that they probably, the other thing that I know about LSS is that they want to do things like correctly. They don't just want to throw things out there and have it be haphazard and whatever. So like, I would assume if they feel like they can't um, fulfill orders or whatever correctly, then Maybe. they're just not going to do it that way. And it's just yeah. easier and more consistent to sell it at actual events. So it sucks, but it's probably because if they tried to sell them online, it would be a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, true. All right, yeah. so I pulled up the image. I have all of the things. Uh, so basically all the stuff that As said, but there's some exclusive like Pro Tour like T-shirts that have like, uh, you know, palm trees and stuff. Um, <laughs> and like a, there's a Pro Tour yeah. sweatshirt, a hoodie. That's that's also, it's like white that says Pro Tour LA. Um, there's like mm -hmm. a, a Flesh and Blood uh, branded or Legendary Studios branded like mug. They have play mats, hats, the Vincent shirt. And if you spend $200 or more, at the booth, you get a like commemorative coin that uh, has like the deathmatch logo, and it says "Blood, Sweat, Steel, Deathmatch, Become a Champion." Um, it also says each product is limited to one per person per day, which I think is kind of cool. So someone can't just go in there and snatch up all the all the play mats and stuff. Um, yeah, that's good. Because I yeah. that was a problem at previous events, especially the ones run by Channel Fireball. They didn't have a cap, so some people would come in and just literally buy every single play mat. And uh, then, like, try to flip them for, like, hundreds of dollars. So, I don't think we're going to have that problem this time. So, it's pretty cool. Um, and also, I agree, with I, what Bill, like... I agree with what Bill said, too. Yeah, I was just, yeah, you can expand on that on, on, in, in a bit if you want. But I was just going to say the pullover hoodie is is something that I wanted to see from LSS. Because they only had the zip one last time. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the, the pullovers. Um, because, yeah, I feel like having a zip having a zip hoodie they can get distorted quite a lot like in the wash and stuff so it's nice to see that um i'm, I'm the worst <laughs> friend of all it. time by the way <laughs> he still still has it i am oh the worst God. friend of all time <laughs> but, i've had this since november <laughs> for the Jeez. for the audio only listeners bill's holding up one of the lss hoodies that i requested that he pick up for me at at, at worlds uh last year um it's in perfect oh conditions yeah, i'll get it at That's some point hilarious. maybe <laughs> Well, nice well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I think it's cool that they're doing merch. Um, it really feels like a lot of the stuff that people requested, like in the last like year and a half, they're they're finally it's finally coming to fruition with like the CC decks that we talked about last week. We have the merch that are coming out. Like it really feels like they're doing the things that players request, but they're kind of like you know, you know, like half a year or a year a year behind, which makes sense, right? It takes time to manufacture to plan. Um, mm -hmm. and get 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 all the details hammered out. I think Bill, what Bill said is, is like spot on. That that would be my guess. Is that I imagine they would want to sell these worldwide. They probably don't have the infrastructure to do so. Being a small company in New Zealand, they probably need a distributor for the merch, like more localized in the United States or in Europe or something like that. Because man, shipping to New Zealand is really expensive, and they probably don't have like the means to do mass shipments from new zealand because i imagine and i've heard this well it's, it's just kind of like pretty obvious right most of the player base is not from new zealand so if they were shipping directly from like the mothership it would take it, almost every shipment would be international um so yeah true. That, that i imagine that's why i i, I can't imagine they want to they're, they're doing it just to make them rare i mean it's cool to have special things but as a company i imagine they're just like yeah we want people to have our branded merch and hoodies it's like free advertising and then they get paid for it um so yeah yeah and it's, it goes goes to show as well i think we were speaking about it with brian or maybe one of the episodes before that where we we're speaking about ips and the power of ips and the message yeah. that they're delivering is that people want to buy these buy these stuff you know it doesn't matter that they the prices are a little bit high it's 90 dollars for a hoodie it's quite high for a, for a, for a hoodie, it but, is yeah. You know, pe people are willing to pay that because of the message, because of the memories and the oh, sort yeah. of, um, you know, what it represents. You know, you we got those hoodies in Barcelona. You know, Barcelona meant something to us. We went there for a reason, etc. Um, and it's a similar thing here. Uh, and I'm sure in the next pro tours and the next world's events, they're still going to have these. They're probably setting a precedent now with their fact that there's going to be always going to be a merch store, which is always good as well. Yeah. So, and in regards to exclusivity, I want to clarify that obviously they they have their event exclusive stuff, right? And that that'll be the 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 limited exclusive stuff. And that to me is like 
your anyone who uh, is a is a fan of music who'd go see bands and stuff, right? You'd you'd get your like tour merch, right? That you can only get at the tour, yeah. And then they also have their yeah. regular merch that you can buy at their website or merch store or whatever. I feel like that that's what this is all leading to, right? They'll have their event exclusive stuff with the exclusive like you know PTLA uh, Worlds. Uh, you know, my guess is New York this year, but uh, they'll have their event exclusive stuff, and then they. I imagine someday, maybe soon, I don't know, that they'll eventually have like a merch store. They're like, oh, you can buy the LSS hoodie that's at every event at the merch store or like a... Just the generic ones. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense to me. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll partner up. Like I know um, Magic the Gathering partners up with, um, you know, clothing manufacturers to do clothing lines or or whatever. So because uh, I know you don't... For Magic, I don't think you buy directly from the, like the... The Wizards of the Coast website. I think they have like a. No, I don't think so. Like yeah. they have like a sec- separate thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that's the first yeah. thing about uh, PTLA new merch. That's something that people have been asking for for a while, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. The what else? We can talk about what we expect to see there, and I let, let's talk about like the part the misfail stuff because I think that's the most exciting for for most people watching this. Is the part mm-hmm. that miss misspell stuff? We can maybe talk about the meta breakdown or anything. I don't know if, if you guys have opinions on that. I'm not sure I do, <laughs> but um, I, really. I, I do have thoughts on the part that misspell stuff uh, and what I expect to see. Um, and, yeah, well, uh, it's a big event, isn't it? We can expect we can expect some big reveals. And if we look at the last event, which was Barcelona, there was a big hero reveal in Kasai. So maybe it's going to be something of that magnitude a big returning character but in adult form you know a big wow thing because this is a ptla sort of situation if that is the case what do we think the hero might be do we think so i i think there's like a 99 percent chance they reveal a hero because they they always that i don't say always always but like like as said they revealed kasai and barcelona and then at like pt leal that's where they revealed the emperor so like yep this seems to be, and then like they revealed uh, Prism at another event. I don't remember which one they revealed Prism at, but they. I remember watching the video that they they revealed Prism, um, uh, the Awakener of Soul. So I imagine we'll get another hero reveal. Um, I think it's going to be Amara, the uh, which is probably going to be the Blue Illusionist, as like we allude, alluded to at the beginning of the episode, the Blueionist. Um, <laughs> I'm if I had to bet money that's what i would bet it would get the blue illusionist or something else and i'll i'll tell you what my other guess is before uh after you guys say what your your guesses are but uh, that, that that's mine chips on the table amara and then i have a secondary that i'll that i'll say in a second so what, what do you guys think i think it is also i mean personally i want it to be amara <laughs> Yeah, I want to, to just like know that there's going to be a blue illusionist so that all these uh, ghostly touches that I still have can be worth <laughs> more than five dollars. Um, but also because I don't know, I feel like the, the play style that the cards that um, are sort of themed around Amara or feature Amara are a, a deck that I would appreciate playing. Uh, I feel like it's a, it's a lot of things with Phantasm. Uh, like spectral procession um, and a few other things just care about like really huge attacks with phantasm uh, yeah. and i want that i want that very much <laughs> i want to i want to unironically pr- play frightmare in like a high level hell yeah game. dude and have it be good yeah. <laughs> hell yeah all right yeah i was looking at i was looking at this earlier as well because i made a silly twitter graphic uh this week which was the fateful scene bloke I... um mm. with <laughs> With the uh, with the flesh and blood new logo thing that's uh, that's out there at the moment, which we can tie into this conversation yeah. as well, which is that blue pitch, um, blue pitch sort of Dragon Ball esque looking thing, right? <laughs> um, I didn't actually ask you this yet, but I was like thinking, yo, as can I use that for the thumbnail for this episode? <laughs> People might already have seen it, depending on your answer, but uh, I think it'd make a good thumbnail for this episode. <laughs> Absolutely, um, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the the issue is, the issue is I'd have to d- redo it again because I I I uh I merged it all down with the podcasts and the uh, speech bubble on the image, so I'd have to do it again basically if you mm. want to get another one. But yeah, that's outside the outside the realms of this podcast. I can do another one if needed. 
Um, but um, yeah, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a big splashy blue illusionist as well. Um, and I was actually looking at cards for this uh, uh, earlier because of the because of the um, I knew it was going to go down this this route. And one card that came out recently, which was part of the bright lights. Um, uh, what are they called? The um, expansion slot? The, that's it. Were Phantom Tidemore, which we haven't really seen anything with, which is the zero cost aura, which says whenever an illusionist card you control is destroyed, put a plus one counter on it. Mm. And it has Phantasm and Ward One. So that just, you know, as things get destroyed, this thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, which just seems like very, very out of place for what was currently around. So I think, yeah, Blue Illusionist is definitely going to be. Because this is a blue card as well, blue zero cost, and maybe that's what even potentially the 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 graphic, the blue the blue pitch thing is alluding to. I've seen a lot of people say, "Is this going to replace the pitch symbol, or is this going to be something new entirely to do with pitch? Just replacing something on a card? What do we what do we think that 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 could be?" Yeah. So so if you don't know, I imagine most uh, viewers or listeners probably have already noticed noticed, but uh, the official Flesh yeah. and Blood accounts. On all of their social media, they, they've updated their logo with this new blue pitch logo. And basically what it is, it's, it's the regular blue pitch logo that has a bunch of like swirling, sparkly, mystically kind of like stuff going on with it. Right. Um, very reminiscent of that, that blue image that they shared um, when they shared part the mist veil. And I think I think it could be everything from just flavor, like, hey, it's a uh, part of the flavor of part the mist veil um to like maybe some weird new mechanic um so yeah i yeah. i think i think it could be everything in between it literally by the way like i said could just be a flavor thing right they could just be like oh it's it's you know alluding to the new blue pitch illusionist it's just kind of a flavor it's kind of like in her style if it's amara it kind of fits the the vibe that she has going on um or maybe it's some new like weird over pitch mechanic or something where I don't know. Maybe the the resources stay for a turn, or I don't know so, something weird. Maybe you like it's kind of like Arsenal, but for pitch or something. Um, yeah. yeah, like I don't know. It could be a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Um, yeah. What so, were you thinking when you saw this, Bill? What was you thinking when you saw this thing, this image? <laughs> Again, first thing that I thought of uh, when I saw the like the glowing blue orbs uh, is is just illusionist uh, and bl- and blue illusionist. And even yeah. I- I'm sure that people have already realized this, but I just have this card on my desk because why wouldn't I? But uh, Phantasmify does very prominently feature uh, the oh, white haired yes. illusionist Amara. And mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody knows about knows this about me, but I love this card. <laughs> I love Phantasmify. <laughs> I love Transmogrify. Um, so if they're printing other types of like, uh, over rate or under rate buffs, um, things that are too good for how much they cost in terms of buffs, but also give phantasm, I'm down for it. Give me like a one for 15, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like a two yeah, for it. seven, but one for 15. Holy crap. No, 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 no. Make me, uh, make me able to war tune Herald for 22. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm also just a huge, huge fan of the character. Um, it, she's the reason why I, I chose to work with two of the flesh and blood artists that I've worked with, both Bima and um, uh, Crovius, because Bima did the artwork for the uh, the, the card that uh, Bill just showed. In fact, I have a like little mini signed print of that art uh, in in like my my background display, and then I also have a Spears of Surreality artist proof from Crovius with uh, she drew Mara on the other side. So I'm like, I, I'm a huge huge fan of the character. That's like maybe my number one most wanted character. So um, yeah, if, if that's, if, if that's the character, I, I'm going to be very, very excited. Um, it, it would give me the motivation yeah. to actually build a new flesh and blood deck. <laughs> since uh, I think, I think Uzuri is the last one, like the last like new deck that I built and it's been over a year. So um, outside of like limited and stuff and, you know, random Highlander things that as and I played, you know, so I'm talking like an actual, yeah. actual like CC deck. Um, so my other well, when oh go ahead, go ahead when the uh, when the second when the second season of League that means nothing comes around, you might be able to uh, build this perhaps in time for that. I'm um, who am I kidding? I'm probably just gonna play Uzuri again. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe she has more, a little more tech though. 
Um, I do, I do keep updating the Uzuri deck, deck. So, um, yeah. But um, yeah. my other prediction, I mean, not prediction. My other, the other hero that I think is could be they could show is um, I think it would be super hype to show Ira if they're gonna put Ira mm-hmm. in the set. That's my other guess. So my, my first guess is Amara. My second guess, and I think this could could also be a thing, and I have reasons for this, is is Ira. Ira's from Mysteria. She mm-hmm. is the OG, the very first flesh and blood hero in the entire game. She's, you know, the the little how to play hero. She's very, very strong, fan favorite, and I think it would be um a great way to to reintroduce the hero in the Mysteria set. I know there's a lot of like lore speculation on like if Ira is even still alive, if she is like, in like a hero of tales past or, or something like that. Um, so I think Ira would be pretty, pretty hype. Um, I think they could go either yeah. way. If Ira is in the set and this just, just occurred to me, they could also have a huge news outlet spoil her as well. That, that, that would be my other thought, like, like how they gave stuff to IGN or, or you know whatever um Mm -hmm. so yeah that that's my other thought ira um i think there's a good chance that ira's in the set just for those reasons alone and uh i think ninja's in the set too so i think ninja and illusionist are pretty slam dunk in the set and then my copium is that assassin's also in the set um and if that's true this could be my oh this could be a top top three favorite set for me so um Got my fingers crossed that that it's everything that I want, so I can, you know, build build some new decks. Man, if it is illusionist and assassin, I I might build like multiple new decks, which is which is crazy. So yeah, illusionist is obviously it's, it's, it's a it's probably a given at this stage. I mean, I'm just looking at um because I was looking at um the Tidemore card. I was looking at other cards, like obviously Phantasma Fire and stuff that that Bill mentioned earlier. Um, and there's a couple of arts as well that sort of allude to this that we haven't mentioned before, which have just struck me. Like things like Phantasmal Haze is, you know, it's got this like this this hazy sort of forest art with like a sort of ninja with the mask sort of thing, sort of crouching down. You've got other things like um, like Spectral Possession, which has got oh, yeah. a load of spirit spirits walking down the aisle. You know, you can see sort of Asian sort of Oni stuff in the background as well. So it's going to be... Some oh, sort dude. of spectral nonsense going on. Oh, like um, the I forget the name of the car, but the defense reaction that Amara is in. Um, that's like a zero for five, but it has the reverse spectra. Um, there's like a ninja oh, attacking oh, yeah. her. Yeah. It's like yeah, death. That's right. She's like definitely in, in Mysteria. Um yeah. it, it all the lines funny thing up. as well about about all these cards as well is they care about spectral shields. Like for instance, spectral possession, its power is equal to the number of spectral shields you control. Mm-hmm. Spectral Rider, which again is another sort of it's on, it's on the same street basically. It's on the same street. It's the Spectral Rider only sort of masks and stuff. When you play it, if you control a Spectral Shield, it gains overpower. There's another one, Spectral Prowler. When you play Spectral Prowler, mm-hmm. if you control a Spectral Shield, it gains go again Phantasm. So maybe all of these cards that we were that we were fe- that we were um, given in Dynasty sort of allude to what we're going to now with maybe a Spectral Shield based thing but blue i have these spectral cards care about spectral shields i just had a lore thought i was thinking about uh the the scene that as was depicting and it, it reminds me of the background to a couple other cards uh there's like the lanterns and stuff but it also reminded me of uh mask mask momentum uh the art on mask mm-hmm. momentum how there's like the, the the lanterns in the background and i don't know I, I think it is all in the same spot i think it's all in the same like city or something in, in Mysteria, or maybe it's just the general vibe of Mysteria, but I think it's definitely, you know, squarely places illusionist in Mysteria, right? Um, yeah. So summoning specters, specters and spirits and, you know, that sort of vibe that's, Oh yeah. Similar to like final, like, yeah. Similar to like final fantasy 10, when Yuna's like sending the spirits away by doing a dance sort of situation. If you get that reference, people listening, yeah. fair play, great game. Um, but yeah, it's gotta be on that. But um, I mean, like, yeah, we'll, we'll see. One of the mechanics that I was thinking and I mentioned in a previous podcast or maybe in a video that I did, I don't remember. But I was talking about how I think spirits are going to be like a big part of the set. 
um, like ghosts or whatever, because you see it a lot in Mysterian related things, not just uh, illusionist, but like in ancestral empowerment, for example, um, there's, there's the spirits in the mist. Um, I think that's going to be like a big part of it. It might even be the talent, right. Of, of the set. Um, cause they said that is, we are going to have a talent in, in, in this. So, um, yeah. Do, do we think with that said, do we think we're going to get any reprints of heroes because they've been doing that every single set and it feels like they're going to continue to do that based on Brian Gottlieb's, um, his, his comments on it and his like reaction to it. He's just like, yeah, the general vibe that I got is we'll likely see at least a couple in, in all the sets. Um, and I have a feeling we'll see some in this set too. So do you guys have any thoughts on if we'll see any reprinted heroes and, and who they could be? I have, I have a couple thoughts, but I'm curious as to yours. I have no idea, I, to be honest. I don't know. What yeah, I don't know. Man. Like, I think the only one that would make sense would be... Hatsu. So, but... in my opinion, there are four that make a ton of sense lore wise. There's Katsu. Um, I don't think we'll get Katsu because we just had him mm. in Outsiders. There's Tozuri, Benji. Then. Well, yeah, there, there's there's Benji who is you know mm. traveling with Katsu. So if Katsu's in the story, Benji could still appear, um, and he could get his adult version, similar to how. Kayo literally just got an adult version. We could get a new updated Benji. Maybe not a re like a straight reprint, but like a return of Benji. Yeah. Um there is uh Ira, like I mentioned. Um I maybe we just get a literal adult version of Ira. Once again, could also be a new version. And then the one that I think we could just get a straight reprint, like a one-to-one -one reprint, is Uzuri, like like as said. I think that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. Uh she's originally from Mysteria. I think events from Outsiders could take her to Mysteria, uh, even though she doesn't want to be there. It's very clear in her lore and story. She she likes the pits like it's her, you know, she's in her element. But um, I think like it very much alludes to the fact that she could she could be going back to Mysteria um, and that her parents knew Katsu. Um, so I think those characters, any any one of those four characters, I think there's a good chance we see it. But if. If we have a returning re straight reprint, I think it would be Uzuri is my guess. I would love a new Uzuri, by the way. I would know. Like, I love. I would love like a talented assassin. We literally have no talented <laughs> assassins in the entire game, uh -huh. um, so I would love a talented assassin. Um, but uh, I, I think we could get a reprint of Uzuri. My my. I, mean, I think I mentioned this in a previous episode too. My tinfoil hat is that we're gonna get one talented hero and one non-talented hero of each of the three classes. So for six heroes total, uh, one talented, one non-talented. That's my guess, but... Um, or if there's two talents, one of each talent. What, however you want to, you know, speculate. Um, yeah, but... I feel like Assassin, Assassin does also fit in with the potential need for six power attacks in the set. Because obviously yeah. Phantasm could be a thing. So I think uh, Assassins have some high power attacks that they can sneak in with Azuri. Um, so maybe yeah. that does make sense it, to have that in there. When thinking about it, like from a design standpoint, it does make a lot of sense in terms of like a rock, paper, scissors, kind of like triangle, right? So you have assassin that would be good against illusionist and illusionist that would be good against ninja and then ninja that would be good against assassin, right? Because, uh, assassins more mid rangey and aggro decks tend to be very good against mid rangey decks. And then you have, you know, Assassin being able to pop the illusionist stuff and the illusionist stuff being able to go over the top of the ninja stuff and just deal a crap load of damage. So just on like a base level, that really makes sense to me in terms of like a, um, you know, game design and like a rock, paper, scissors kind of thing for limited, uh, because, you know, you have to really think about limited when you think about and uh, try to predict this kind of stuff, because, you know, one of their core concerns is making a good limited environment. Um, mm -hmm. So, um yeah, that, that's, you know, what I always think about. So I think that's a very likely if, if there's if there's a, a, a class that's not those classes, I'm going to be so surprised. I'm going to be the level of surprise that I was when they showed Shadow Brute uh, in, in Monarch. And if, for those of you who weren't around at the time, that was insane. No one, <laughs> literally not a single person ever predicted 
Shadow Brood. At the time, everyone's like, okay, the set's called Monarch. It has to do with like kings or something. Um, everyone was like, there's Assassin's gonna finally be in the set. It wasn't. Um, they were like, oh, there could be a lot of all of these things. Uh, warrior because because of the um, you know, knights and stuff. Everyone was like predicting it all around like that. No one shadow brute. Uh so um That's so funny. Or even Rune Blade at the at the time. So uh yeah. Brilliant. They could do something weird. And it could maybe maybe it has to do with this weird blue pitch thing. Maybe maybe they have like a wizard in the set too, right? I don't know. Um maybe 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 there's no ninja. Maybe it's like illusionist wizard and assassin or something. I don't know. I personally don't think that's gonna be the case. I think they're saving wizard for the next set. But um because because my my other tinfoil hat theory is that the next set is gonna be the all arcane set that has wizard and rune blade and I don't know, maybe necromancer or something. Um yeah, that that's that's my little my little guess on that. Yeah. Um and then Yeah, that makes sense. I, I I eagerly await the comments down below that are like Nah, bro. It's gonna be shadow shadow mech's time to shine. <laughs> you already got your shadow, shadow mech. mech. You, you already got mech one. Lovasen. That's what mech you're getting. In that, that, yeah, that's that's your shadow mech. Um, uh, cool tech God, tech. like metrics and Mysteria. What a what a what a vibe shift, man. Um, <laughs> man, Fle- uh, flesh and blood lore also, really though. really feels like biome specific, right? Um, mm. it's like metrics, and then you look at like Mysteria, and it's like two different genres, kind of. It's like it's like um, you're watching like Demon Slayer, and then like a Gundam just just shows up, right? <laughs> like that's that's the vibes, right? Um, yeah, it's 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 kind of cool that they've done that to a certain degree, but yeah, it doesn't really make much sort of sense but yeah it's cool nonetheless can't wait to see what, what happens with because uh... james said it was obviously his favorite set to date he says that about everything I yeah, guess, he says but... about every set man like he said like dust till dawn is the best set ever um yeah he didn't he... i don't think he said it about outsiders but outsiders is in my opinion um my totally unbiased opinion the best set that they've done i i do think it is but yeah it's, it was good fun wasn't it yeah but... i Heavy hitters is pretty good, but I'll be honest, I got, I got kind of bored of heavy hitters pretty quickly. Maybe it's just because I don't really care that much about Brute and Guardian. I love Warrior. Warrior's great. But yeah, um, I got a comment recently that similar, like uh, one of my regular commenters, shout out to Kevin, and I believe, I think, I think it was Kevin, who was just like, I'm just waiting for the next set now. I, I, I'm i kind of over heavy hitters already. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, me too. Um I think yeah, that, difficult one, it? that goes into the, the problem that we've talked about many, many times that, uh, you know, the three set a year thing. It's good on financially yeah. speaking, but if you're not into a set, it could be a, a while before, you know. It can feel like a long time until there's a set that you like care about, um, which is not necessarily like a bad thing. Um, but sometimes, you know, if there was like, three versions of um of bright lights all in a row then like Ugh. can kind of feel bad <laughs> for me <laughs> like, it, I think kind, it kind of is they're not yeah. planning on it I mean, yeah they're, they're definitely never like planning on doing that but i think it can incidentally just happen mm-hmm. um if you're not because they're printing new classes into the game constantly but you can't have like eight classes in a set that isn't something like crew where it's just everybody's getting a little bit of support but i think they want like more fully fleshed out support especially for new heroes that have like alternate game plans and aren't exactly the same um, yeah and they have, and yeah, they have to plan for the limited too yeah. yeah uh though i mean last week uh as and i talked about how that they announced sort of at, at gamma that there's going to be 11 products a year for flesh and blood now um 11 months out of the year, there's going to be a new product, not a new booster set, but a new product. And these products. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. So that's something that they officially announced um, 11 products a year. This is uh, then they showed this alongside the announcement for the the classic constructed starter decks, or I don't want to call them starter decks, the classic constructor pre-constructed decks. Um, 
my hope is that they're not starter decks. I want them to be like actual, like good decks. Um, and uh, they said that the, st- the 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 CC precons will be released one at a time. So I imagine we'll see like a slew of that kind of stuff in between the you know the four months between the between booster sets. So we'll have like booster product, and then maybe we'll have CC deck, um, round the table product, CC deck, and I don't know like a another thing. Um, so that's what I'm planning or not planning expecting that's what i expect um, yeah yeah and i really hope the cc decks are good i made a tweet earlier that was just like um like flesh and blood is the most competitive card game that i cover and it has the least competitive starter decks out of all of them and um looking at the games it's not even it's not even close um when you compare the you know, competitive staples in the cease and the, the blitz decks for flesh and blood to literally any other card game that I cover. It's like pretty, pretty stark. Um, so hopefully these new CC decks can really help alleviate that and, uh, you know, provide a path for people to, you know, play and compete. Um, and maybe a a reason, easy way for people to jump into new heroes without having to spend crap loads of money. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Because, like, all of the other card games that I cover, and I'm going to even toss in Wii Cross with that, um, you know, the anime waifu card game, um, literally has significantly better pre-cons than Fab. Like, uh, Wii Cross puts, like, competitive tournament staples in their in their decks. Like, like so... Very nice. Yeah. And then, I've talked about it for Shadowverse, there's, you know, cards in the pre-cons that showed up at worlds like on, on the live stream like you know pre-con cards in world champion decks so be cool for flesh and blood to do something similar doesn't all have to be C- your... uh, command and conquers but yeah yeah just well just just uh because obviously you weren't here last week bill so the cc decks they're branded as armory level decks mm-hmm. that can compete that, that can compete at a local armory so what what does that what does that mean to you do you think from a canadian armory perspective what 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 would that be what would that look like do you think because everyone's um, perspective is different yeah um <laughs> i don't know i think it like the thing that's nice about flesh and blood and this has been true for a long time and i've said this for a while too like outside of the like big let's say the big 3 like command and conquer enlightened strike art of war um, outside of that, like decks can be pretty reasonably priced. Um, it, it doesn't take that much to have a deck that can take down an armory. Um, especially if you're talking about something like Blitz, where you don't need three copies of a card and you only need two and the games don't last as long. Like, mm-hmm. um, commons are really strong in this game. Like you look at something like, um, Scar for a Scar and, um, mm-hmm and razor reflex and you know fate for c and sink below like all these cards are really really powerful and contribute to a to a very cohesive game plan whatever deck that you're playing them in really um there are some rares like even um blitz still has access to plunder run uh plunder run is not an expensive card because it's banned in cc um <laughs> also so just i rare. guess these are cc yeah these are cc precons. so i'm kind of uh talking around the point but to me at an armory, like if you're not going to a higher level event, I think you have a decent shot at taking it down with kind of any deck. Um, it doesn't even need to be super powerful. Like I think that um, Tunic is starting to be a little bit not necessarily power crept, but there are there are options that exist now. You don't just have to play Tunic because you don't have another option. Yeah. Um, and so outside of like the big three um decks are pretty reasonable like you can play a cc dorinthia deck without blade flurries and still have a good deck um you can you know probably make a a pretty reasonable uh dorinthia deck that could take down the average armory for i don't know like you don't even really need um you don't even really need uh crown of providence uh as much uh for just armory level like you could probably make a reasonable dorinthia deck for like 60 bucks I would say, and that's like Canadian. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know if that's the real math. I'm just kind of thinking off the top of my head, but like 
Dorinthia is really strong, works really well into a meta where people maybe don't <clears throat> play against Dorinthia very much. If the more uh, information that you have and the more knowledge you have, the stronger the deck is. Um, so that's why that's why I find that's why I find the marketing armory level deck hard to comprehend because it's like the commander preamble. Like what yeah. le- what what power level is your deck? Oh, okay, it's a six. No, it's not. <laughs> it's like an eight. Yeah. You know, every single person who, who says that the deck is a seven until it's not. <laughs> no, exactly. I, I know my 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 decks are pretty. They run pretty hot. They're not CEDH, but they're like eight or nines. Like I run mm-hmm. two two card kill. Like you know, you know combos. But um, you have to, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, I agree with Bill with the exception of equipment. I feel powerful mm-hmm. equipment depending on the hero. It really depends on the hero. So it some you can get away with it for more. Um, some heroes like uh, Azalea, for example, really, really rely on the legendaries, and if you don't have them, she sucks. Um, so like, yeah, that, I, I go with that. And like, Flesh and Blood is a game of like incremental advantage, and some if you're rocking up with like full Iron Rot versus someone with like, with like full legendaries, and they can fridge block you for like eight or nine and basically steal your turn, that's like the game, right? Like that can win you the yeah. game for Flesh and Blood. So I think. Um, they need to put good equipment in these. This is what I'm getting at. Like, they don't have to be, it doesn't have to be like Crown of Providence, uh, Tunic and stuff, but they, they can't just put you like crap, like actual crap equipment, yeah. like a like Blitz Precon level stuff. Like, maybe they print new equipment. Maybe they make brand new equipment. They did say they're, they're going to be making new cards for this. Maybe they make like uh, specialization equipment on the level of like Good Time Chapeau, right? Mm-hmm. I'd be cool with that. Absolutely. that. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Um, but. Like, if you're playing Assassin right now, you, you run Crown of Providence um, or the new crown or the new hat. You literally have no other good options unless you're Arachne and you're trying to do a we- weird, like, Mask of Perdition kind of deal. But if you're Azuri, you play the legendary hat and you play the legend, you play the tunic and you play your legendary boots and you play your legendary gloves because everything else sucks. So, like, some classes you, you rock in full legendaries, like, basically uh, either way. So, um yeah yeah that was I, one I, of the points we we raised on the on the thing the last one was that they could use similar stuff as to what they've done with the recent heroes and heavy hitters yeah. right? like olympia's olympia's hat or you know betsy's hat etc um yeah. specializations with actual good block on them as yep. well rather than just the generic legendary ridiculously priced stuff yeah and i, I agree with bill with, with the main deck stuff uh because like yeah, you can have a pretty solid main deck with like you don't you don't need need like command and conquers or e strike or art of war is a little different. Some some decks really 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 shine with art of war, but um, uh, I feel like CNC and e strike are fairly replaceable, and um, you can kind of get away with it. But I mean like this is a good place for them to to reprint stuff like art of war, right? If they're if they're like oh here's our um, new ninja CC deck and here's an art of war in it. Um, and then I don't know. Maybe they'll maybe they'll throw you a bone. And here's a because it's, it's a what forty dollar deck, right? It's a forty or fifty bucks. I think it's forty dollars. I think it's forty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And then here here's a reprint in non foil of a legendary. Like here's a uh tiger stripe shuko or something. Like it's not even a, an expensive legendary, but you know here you go to kind of like start your journey. Um, I think that could help a lot of people. Like, you know. Try the game out, actually, or maybe try a new hero. Um, mm. Yeah, they don't they don't have yeah. to like super juice it up, but it also sh- it also should actually have a couple majestics and you know maybe a legendary or something like. Yeah, like I don't want I don't want it to be just a blitz precon that has like uh, sink belows instead of like whatever random you know chaff that that's in yeah. the other one so. Yeah. I'm I'm really I, I do think that they know that that's sort of what they need to play into is th- there needs to be think, yeah. some decent cards and reprints in these. Um, I kind of hope that they don't do the um, glistening steel blade thing again, um, because they might. It, <laughs> they might. I think that they. Might. So the thing the thing is, I think that they will. I think that it is like pretty guaranteed that they will, because it's a really easy thing to do in these types of products. I'm not blaming them for doing that. I just think that it it feels bad as the consumer. Um, 
I have an idea. I'll, I'll let you finish, but I have an idea when you're finished. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I think that it feels bad as the consumer. I think it makes sense from just a business standpoint to be like, oh, here's a thing that will basically guarantee sales. Like, this is a new card. It is really good. People need to play it. So let's just put it in this deck. I just hope yeah. that if they do that, they include more than one copy per deck. Yeah. Um, um, because if it's Glistening Steelblade yeah. again, they only included one Glistening Steelblade per uh, Classic Battles deck. And having to buy all three of them for like, it was like 150 Canadian dollars uh, yeah. just to get a play set of Glistening Steelblade and not caring about any of the other cards feels really bad. <laughs> There, there's that yeah. and then these are also supposedly only they are um limited print run and also exclusive to um gem stores um yeah i think the limited print run is more just like uh so stores don't end up with a bunch of like crap that they don't need you know that's gonna sh sit on yeah. the shelf uh I, I think that's that's fine i think i think bill's totally right um my thoughts are this is a cool way that they could do it right so i, I have a feeling they're gonna do exactly what bill said they might even only do put put one of each in and encourage people to buy multiple copies of the decks. Um, I, I I'm pretty against that, but hey, a lot of card games do that. Um, but I think if they were if they were going to be very consumer friendly about it, they could do that, and then in a future uh you know set maybe next year or a year out or whatever, they could reprint the exclusive cards in like the expansion slot. I think the expansion slot really allows them to 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 reprint it in a way that doesn't um you know mess with the set but it's still like consumer friendly um so that that's that would be like my hope i have a feeling that they are going to do that kind of stuff though like they're going to do like you know here's the here's the riptide cc deck and we put a banger riptide specialization in it uh because the hero's not doing really well i, I think it's actually I'll also say i think it's actually might be good that they do that for cases like riptide where he really needs like some support um and that would be a good place to do that um, and then I hope they also like reprint that card other places too. So it's not exclusive to this limited time gem store only deck. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's yeah. Depending on how depending on how proactive they are with it as well, or whether it's planned out or not, they could actually use the if they are wanting if they are wanting to print certain things similar to the expansion slot, they can actually release that deck with that piece of support in it if they need to do that sort of thing you know so it just depends on how they want to use it as well i guess because they can do that's what's that's what's great about the expansion slot as well we don't know what's going to come in the next set they could just be putting stuff in as they see fit to how they want the meta or how they want the sort of decks to be you know what what decks they want uh, have access to cards so yeah it's a really really good thing so we'll see what happens with that but yeah I, yeah. I have a lot of high hopes for the, the CC decks. Um, personally speaking, um, as a content creator, it was good content, right? You could open up and review the new decks, but also you can do like fun little matches, right? It, it sounds like they're only releasing one at a time, but, you know, after they release at least two or something, you can have like a fun match that is just like, you know, pre pre con battles. Um, hell, like even if, you know, if they keep releasing a lot of them after a while, you can make your own like pre con battle box or something like that. So you can just have like, you know, some people do this with the blitz decks, um, but like having like actually like good <laughs> decks to do this with um, would be fun. I have one for, you know, not to talk, not to talk about magic too much on the podcast, but I have one for um, I have a commander precon battle box that has um, nine commander deck precons that I kind of curate. Um, I put it in a cube of jigs box that that the, the prof, prof uh, recommended and um, it's cool. Like. If I if I have like my brother over uh, who doesn't he plays magic but he doesn't maintain a collection at all, it's fun to just be like I have this battle box right I have nine decks, blood pick a deck you know I, I put some cool ones in there too like the the brothers war decks that have all of the old retro frame cards and there's the uh, I, I anyway not to talk about too much but it's fun and I think that could be cool for flesh and blood to you know be able to oh, do yeah. that with decks that are good because the commander decks these days tend to be pretty good actually. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, but we spoke about it a little bit last time as well, where if you release too many of them, there's a chance that they could just sit on the shelf if they don't. Yeah. Because we see a lot of a lot of old Commander decks that just just sat on game store shelves, just not going anywhere. Well, um, I, so I think there's a couple we'll of reasons for that. I think it's because they pump out those decks like so much. There's like dozens of that crap every single year. Where, I, remember, I remember when it... 
back in my day, they used to only do one commander release a year. It was like, you know, yeah, this is the commander 2015 decks. And it was just like the five decks or the four decks or whatever. And I literally used to buy them every single year. It was kind of like one of my like uh, little treats to myself when I wasn't a content creator. I was like, Oh, I'll buy the commander decks. And uh, yeah, I, but like now they just pump out so much. Um, I think they're trying to curb that with, with what I mentioned with them being like a, um, essentially a timed exclusive, you know, with being like a limited print run gem store only kind of deal. I think that helps with it. Um, they just have to be careful with that. So they don't underprint something that is in super high demand, but they print enough that people who want to play and, you know, get them at a decent cost can do that. Um, mm. That's just the logistic thing that LSS needs to figure out. The first couple decks might be rough because of that. Either way, like it might be super scarce and expensive if they're like sought after, or they might just be like way too many and sit on the shelves. I don't know. We'll have to see what what end of the spectrum they fall on. But yeah. either way, you shake it. I think as long as you can buy these and they're like not terrible, I think it's just like a, a home run product, right? If you can find these at MSRP, by the way, 40 bucks is MSRP. It's not map. So I imagine places might sell these for cheaper than that. Um, um, yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Um, we'll see. Apparently we're getting, we, oh, you know what? That's actually one of the things they might announce at the freaking pro tour, man. Like they literally said that th these are coming out like soon, right? They're coming out like, like spring or summer, uh, 2024. Like, like did they say like quarter good. one or something. Um, yeah. So I imagine we will get something for that too. Yeah. I just, just, just recurred to me. I didn't even think about that. Could be, yeah. But um yeah, I guess hmm. obviously yeah, ne next next week's next week's podcast is gonna be a lot of juicy news and stuff, but um mm -hmm. I just thought I'd just thought I'd bring us back to the CC decks because I wanted to get sort of Bill's opinion on it on it because he didn't yeah. really wasn't here last week. Um but um but yeah, I mean is there much is there much else this week? I guess we've just sort of spitballed for a nah. bit, but we could could do an Arsenal step and, and just end it this week, but I I don't know what else there is really. <laughs> yeah i do think that's probably about it like we're we're just sort of killing time until next week <laughs> yeah Pretty next much, week's yeah. when all the exciting stuff comes i mean it's one of the problems with uh them only doing three sets a year but it sounds like with 11 products a year at least we'll have some new thing to talk about every single month which is kind of cool um whether it be a cc deck or um something otherwise i guess the last topic we can talk about before we go into that is does, does anyone have any strong opinions on what they expect to see win the event or is it so open that it could just be anything? Cause I'm kind of of the, the second mind, you know, I think it's, I think it's a pretty open meta right now. Um, in fact, I think I've seen people overwhelmingly complain about how open the meta is and how it's not obvious what people should be playing. <laughs> yeah. That, um, that's a, that's a very specific mindset that, that leads you down that yeah. path, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do think yeah. that, like, I do think that there is some truth in that. I think that it is, um, it is very open. Yeah, uh, I think it is which too. Is not a bad thing. I, I think that that's totally reasonable. That the that there isn't just a best deck right now in this format, um, and I think that's great. And I don't know who I'm hoping to win. Honestly, like, I I just like seeing warriors win. Uh, and I did see that there was a tournament result for somebody who topped. I don't, I don't remember what the event was, but with uh, hatchets Kasai. Yeah. And like, that's just awesome. Pretty like sweet. just yeah. hell. Yeah. <laughs> Kasai would be cool. I mean, yeah. obviously I want Uzuri to win. Um, everyone always underestimates Uzuri and she just won that. Uh, was it a battle hardened? Um, so I think, yeah, I think well, Uzuri yeah. can kind of sneak in there and, and maybe get a win. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see. But, yeah, that, that's my. Yeah, hope. I saw, I saw, I saw an interesting, um, an interesting tweet from uh, our French friend Romain, mm. uh, Romain oh, yeah. Nicholas, um, and uh, he, he sums it up fairly well. He said, "I understand why some competitive slash pro players don't like this meta game, but I've never been exci as excited about an event as I am with this Pro Tour. Um, and if you know me, you know I'm very excited about this game. Um, this is a big open field is the main reason. Go bolt in, go." Um, so, yeah, it, um, it's, it's like one of those things, isn't it? If you're a competitive, competitive player, you want to know that you're going to be facing the, th the same three decks because you can plan around that, that thing and optimize your deck. 
But then if you, if, the, if the field is so wide open and you suddenly face a riptide or whatever, mm. and, and, and riptide, is, riptide was in the top eight recently as well. Um, I think it was... Oh, I can't remember yeah, where it was. There, there was a riptide, yeah. Um, so it just goes to show that if... The, you know, the more heroes there are, the that's more cool though, man. Like, it is, I think yeah. that's great. Like, I, I understand like the whole what what you said, but man, isn't it awesome that like someone can rock up with a freaking Riptide deck and like get to top eight, like just out of nowhere? Yeah. That's sick, dude. Exactly. Like, yeah. that that's awesome. That means like as a player, unless you're like the person who's like, oh, I need to you know learn these three decks and you know do my matchups. If you're a player and you're like, I love Riptide, I'm gonna play a Riptide at this event. The fact that you can do that. And then get like top eight is um, really good in my opinion for like optics for the for the game. Uh, makes the game look really healthy, and it makes it look like your your decisions are meaningful in terms of like deck deck choice, um, and not just hey play one of these uh, four cookie cutter meta builds and uh, you know that that's it. Um, so I get yeah. it, I understand the the that perspective, but I personally think it's cool that uh, it's it's so open. And it looks good. It looks good for the game. Um, so anyone, any outside person looking in, it's great. Because it always looks it always looks terrible when you see like the pie charts for like competitive season and it's literally just like three decks. That looks like it was like I'm like, I'm glad I'm not playing that game. <laughs> um Yeah, for a for a for a hero centric game to have uh you know a pro tour that's just three heroes, it's just like for for an outsider outsiders looking in, it's just like, oh, okay, well, I like this hero, like the like the warrior. Why is there Starvo, Prism, and Chain? I don't care about them. <laughs> yeah, you know. So yeah, the more the more open it is, the better. Um, but I think I think my my pick might be Dromai at the moment. A lot of people seem to be on that train at the moment, and um, yeah. So I, I think I think that's my <laughs> my potential pick. I think Drum Dromai is funny because she so far is one of the heroes that's very, very strong, but has yet to convert at one of the, the big premiere events like Pro Tour Worlds or something like that. Uh, yeah. so she's like always like, you know, very close, very, very close, but doesn't get there. Like Worlds, famously, Phi ended up winning. Um, so like, mm -hmm. who knows? Maybe some weird oddball deck, you know, takes it that no one's thinking of. Like I said, that's one of the reasons why I really like Uzuri as a as the pick other than she's just my favorite hero but like you know these these decks that people don't expect that are like oh she's a c-tier hero or whatever can like come in out of nowhere and like take an event um so kano also looks looks pretty scary at the moment as well uh, there's a lot of kano I, nonsense going around i think kano kano's interesting because kano's very 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 strong if people are not prepared for kano um mm. and it's it's difficult to prepare for kano because you you have to take you know several slots in your in your sideboard just you know specifically for kano but if you don't he's just yeah. gonna blow you the hell up because if you have no arcane barrier you're just dead um or if yeah. you're just running a red line deck like dromai good luck um but that's a great thing as that's a great thing about this as well as as well as if there's all these different heroes that do these different things it creates stories as well like you can have those those you know the riptide that just manages to get all the right matchups to get to the you know where they need to be to be yeah. in the top eight or whatever. It just creates these narratives that again for optics look very good. And the more that flesh and blood expands upon that, I think it's just going to get to that stage where these things can happen. Um, yeah. Clearly, there will be there will be the best decks, the most optimized number crunching decks out there like ko is probably just one of the most consistent because oh, is probably I, one of the most consistent i've heard like people a lot of people think bright reinar is like really up there right now like um true yeah i think so, someone i think it was carol wasn't it who tweeted yeah that he, that's his pick yeah multiple lss devs have said said reinar so like the mm. fact that like there's so many heroes i think it's going to be really exciting um i think we could see like uh you know uh six seven eight different heroes represented in like the top eight which is kind of cool um i would not be surprised at all if you're like kasai ko uh maybe even a, an azalea in there maybe even a kano maybe even like a dash you know a dash inventor extraordinaire is really good um maybe even like i said uzuri or a katsu katsu is really good too like you could see a top eight where there's just like a ton of different heroes so i think i think it's um a nice little toss-up and uh yeah, it should, it should be a really, as a viewer of, like, Flesh and Blood and a fan, I think it should be a really exciting uh, pro tour to, like, watch. Um, 
So yeah, I'm, I'm, too. I'm looking forward to, I'm not sure if I'm, we'll be able to catch it live, but uh, definitely looking forward to catching like the top eight um, and then all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, I think prism is pretty good as well. The new oh prism, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, the awakener of soul or whatever. Right. Yeah. So I've seen a couple of matches being played on, on the league that I'm doing at the moment. So it's good to see that prism actually can she, do some good stuff. I think she got a top eight recently too. Right. Like at a, I think so, yeah. I think I saw, I think I saw her one of the lists. So, um, yeah, could be cool. So, so again, that 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 deck is all on hits now. With every single herald, if it hits, you go and get the thing, and that's another thing you have to deal with. So that can really stack up, and it has access to things like Ark Light Sentinel and Herald of Erudition, which is Ooh, just yeah. an absolutely vile, absolutely vile card. Especially if you combine it with Goliath Gauntlet. Um, you, it's coming in for was it maybe seven dominate? Or it, it, it would be seven dominate. Gauntlet? Yeah, because uh, yeah. Erudition's five base. Yeah, so it's, and then you got the 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 figment of figment of rebirth, herald of rebirth that puts that get it back. Erudition back on. Yeah, it's not. You can very do nice. like and, miraging metamorph shenanigans. Ooh, you get some yeah. good stuff going on. Um, yeah, yeah. So prism's pretty cool as well. Yeah, it, it's saw, uh. It's one of those rock, paper, scissors things too, right? If there if there's a lot of Rhinars, then Prism's gonna be pretty sad. Like a lot of brutes just in general. Oh, like we didn't even talk about Leviah. Like uh Leviah is oh, really yeah. strong right now too. Like uh God, wouldn't it be wild to have both Leviah and Azalea, the two like meme heroes, like in the top eight of the Pro Tour? That'd be that'd be sick as hell, dude. Um Yeah. Get a, get a, get a, get an arachne in there or like a a, a Riptide. Oh, that is like my dream scenario that would be so cool arachne oh imagine that arachne. Like, there was an arachne yeah, that did really well in like the last month or two as, as well like yeah uh yeah. like i got some high hopes i hope it's not just like four dromais and you know a bravo and you know uh whatever like i hope it's like a good mix of cool heroes i'm excited for it yeah. But that's all to come this weekend. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, whoever, whoever's listening to this now in the future, that's uh, all of our speculations could just be absolute dog manure. Um, and uh, we could yeah, just we'll, be chatting absolute rubbish. Yep, and we'll be reporting back next week as we discuss the yeah. the the winning Arachne deck as well as the reveal of um, Mist Brute in, <laughs> in part yeah, of Mist Brute. Yeah, Mist Brute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, God, uh, dude. Uh, that, that, Let's, let's let's throw it out there for next week's episode then. So we're going to call the Pro Tour winner hero, and then the the hero reveal. So that, let, let's do that. Let's do the audience okay. participation too. Yeah, let, let us know what you think. My my guess, uh, we can go around the table here real quick and say our guesses. Mine mine's easy. Amara and Uzuri. That's copium, but I'm trying to put that energy out into the space. Uh, how about how about you, Bill? What's your what's your call for uh, winning hero and uh, hero reveal? The for winning hero and hero uh, reveal, I think the hero reveal is going to be Amara. I think that's like the easy answer, and it's the one that I drew, truly, genuinely want in my in my soul. Um, which is a funny joke, by the way. Soul illusionist. Um, gotcha. Brilliant. Yeah, really good. Gotcha. And <laughs> winning, I'm going to say Ko. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna say Ko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not mm -hmm. not old Ko, new Ko. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. As cool, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with I'll stick with Dromai, although I absolutely hate playing against it um, mm. as Azalea. Um, I think Azalea has a lot of obstacles, unfortunately, at the moment. Um, but um, but yeah, and the hero, I probably I'm probably gonna say the Illusionist also, because um, that's what I'd I'd love to see that as well, just to see what that is, see how that plays. Um, but yeah, we will see. Exciting times. Yeah new stuff all right well you heard it here first though those are uh those are predictions um and then i also I, as well what you what, what you think in the comments below what is the hero we're gonna see revealed and what hero is gonna win oh, leave a comment i just had my my here my spicy third prediction is uh cc deck reveal ira um that's oh. my that's my third i think it'd be a nice double whammy amira new hero CC deck Ira to prep people for ninja. So that that's that's my thing. Um all right, well let's proceed to our arsenal step. 
Um, do you guys have any uh, anything exciting going on outside the world of Flesh and Blood that you'd like to um, discuss today? Um, I was kind of mentioning this to the guys before we started filming, but uh, I just finished sorting the cards that we pulled from uh, the upcoming magic set, Ooh. Outlaws at Thunder Junction. Yeehaw! Um, <laughs> which is in fact the yeehaw set uh and i can confirm without breaking anything that i've signed or so or, or anything uh every single character and every single living being has a cowboy hat on it That's <laughs> Tarnation. You know, you that the <laughs> if i was a magic content creator man I, I would go to town on this um with all like the cowboy stuff like yeah uh. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a ton of fun. It's a really cool set. We actually drafted it and we've played the uh, the precons already. Um, and if for anybody who's following magic and is excited for cowboy themed magic, the gathering cards, uh, you will not be disappointed. The set is really cool. <laughs> it's high noon. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, yeah, that, that's pretty sweet. Um, anything uh, you got going on as? Uh, yeah, so on Friday, I'm going to London to go to another gig. Nice. Um, so this, this is a band called Fight Star. Um, oh. So people that, are, people that are familiar with uh, Busted, which is a big UK band, um, basically they're, well, I'm not going to say their main guy, but he's the most talented one, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, Charlie, Charlie Simpson, um, back in sort of the early 2000s, uh, maybe mid 2000s went off and did his own band because he was very much into rock and metal at the time um so uh so yeah he created a band and yeah they're doing like an anniversary gig at Wembley Arena which is a big arena in London um so I've got seated tickets because I want to sit there and appreciate the music rather than get elbowed and left and right at you know, mid 30s it's not what you know yeah what, get, what you'd be get doing thrashed in the mosh pit also not great if you have glasses um no, from exactly. firsthand experience, getting like elbowed in the face and then <laughs> yeah. someone stepping on your glasses. Not great. It's like, oh, um, no. Yeah. Doesn't... Yeah. So I've got a gig, got a gig to go to. <laughs> it um, helps being a bigger guy, I'll, though. I'll... It doesn't happen to me all that much, but you know. Yeah. You just stand there with your arms out like this. Yeah. Get yeah. out of here. But yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to experience that. I just want to appreciate the music. It's one of my favorite bands. Um, and uh, they're going to be headlining Wembley. So it's going to be a big, long set with a lot of uh, songs from their entire disc discography. Um, so that's nice. going to be good. Um, and yeah, I discovered another band actually recently called Galleons, which are very good. And I actually sent Brian Gottlieb the album because I know he likes <laughs> similar music to me. And he was like, oh, cheers, mate. I'll listen to this uh, soon. So maybe he's listening to it on the plane over to LA or something. But yeah, it's very, very good. Very cool. Um, so yeah, a lot of music stuff, and then I am just waiting uh, eagerly for Dragon's Dogma Two to be released. Bro, like it's like it's like two days. It's like two days from the time of this recording. Uh, I don't, I didn't pre-order because I don't really do the pre-order stuff unless uh, they have things that I really care about, and I don't care about the extra weapon skins or whatever. But um, no. I'm so stoked for Dragon's Dogma Two. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be no lifing yeah. that this weekend. Um, I also. Returning to a card game I used to cover quite a bit in the early Red Zone Rogue days. I haven't covered it in about a year. We cross. And I did a big trade uh, with uh, someone who is a store owner, I think, on the East Coast. And I basically traded some foil sorcery cards for like a ton of sealed We Cross. Uh, I wanted to get back into it, but I also didn't want to have to pay. pay. Uh, so I was like, okay, I could technically sell some cards and then then buy stuff. But I found someone who was awesome who just straight up did a trade with me. Someone like reputable. I I would normally wouldn't do this with just some like random person. But um I knew this I knew this guy was legit. And so I'm getting like 30 boxes or something to to get back in. Like six six boxes of every set from set eight, nine, ten, eleven, and the Niji Sanji set, plus the the two deck starter decks that I did. So I'm excited to get back into it. I love the game. It's super fun. If you're into anime stuff, um I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, the game is lead designer is Shota Yasuka, Ma Magic the Gathering Hall of Famer. Um, very well designed, very fun game. Uh, cannot recommend it enough. Uh, he also, I tweeted about this too. He also, I didn't know this, also lead designer on Shadowverse Evolve. And I was like, I guess I'm just a huge fan of the, this dude. Like he makes great games. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's 
mostly what I've been doing, you know, my little return to Wii Cross, and then um, uh, yeah, Dragon's Dogma 2. Going to be playing that a lot. I've been playing, you know, tr tr trundling through Final Fantasy VII, um, playing a lot of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Um, if you've played Relink, I'm finally at the point where I can solo farm the final boss uh, for the, the weapon so I can fight the DLC guy. Um, I had, I was having trouble with, with the final boss because there's a, there's a point where there's like a DPS check and the AI companions kind of suck. Sometimes they're great at staying alive. They're not great at doing a lot of damage. And there's a final DPS check when you get him to like 15% health where he, he does this move and the meter fills up. And if, if it fills up, you insta lose, he just kills everyone. Um, and so, and so like, it's, it's not too bad if all of my AI companions would actually hit the boss. But unfortunately during that phase, he also spawns ads and you just ignore the ads, but all of the AI dudes break off and they start attacking the ads. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? Just kill, kill the guy. <laughs> uh, so there's, there's a way you can get around it. Uh, uh, you, you, you skybound art at 17% health. So you can actually go into that phase <laughs> when he's like at five, five to five percent or lower. And then you can actually do it anyway. Uh, so that's that's that. And so once Bill gets back, we'll uh, do a little sign off. Um, yeah. So playing playing some games, ha having having a good time. Um, yeah, well, you get you get to play it this weekend. I I don't get to buy it until the weekend after that. So you're going to be one week ahead of me, which could be a hundred hours yet. We don't we don't know. I mean, and you're not going to be able, not going to be able to use my pawn to assist you. Although I don't know whether it's cross platform because I'll be getting it for I, PC. I hope it so. is. I hope it's cross platform. I I have played other games that are cross platform. Like I think uh, Diablo Two Remastered was like cross platform. You could like play with other people um, on like Battle.net with your on. on PS5, you can play with people on PC. So hopefully that, you know, Capcom has the means to do so. That would be cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not like you're playing together anyway. You're just using the other player's character in your party, aren't you? So I guess... Yeah. Hopefully be... you can put in, like, a code or something where you can get their pawn. Mm -hmm. Like, in, in Dragon's Dogma 1, you could just pull it from your friends list. Um, but I don't know yeah. if that would work. You... I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, hopefully you can, though. Um I'll, I'll be that's, playing. That's that, is, that, is that your sort of game, Bill, or not? Dragon's Dogma. Um, mm. I've been looking at it. Um, I recently got into because uh, my friends and I were trying to find multiplayer games to play, uh, just like to have boys' nights, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And the ones that we landed on were Sea of Thieves, which is like uh, from a million years ago, but uh, mm -hmm. is still active, and uh, we've been playing it for a little bit, and it is fun to be a pirate. Uh, and then yeah. also yeah. Hell Divers. I was gonna say, is it Hell Divers? That's, that's what everyone's playing right now. That's a co-op yeah. or democracy. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm I would play that if I had friends to play it. As a like someone who just plays video games like solo, it's not my bag. If, if I was in college, I would have loved it so much. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I will say, what in they're... terms of like live service games, uh, <laughs> the like dropping into random people's parties and stuff is really seamless and painless. Um, like I have played a decent amount of, of solo at this point. It's more fun with like actual people when you're coordinating. Are there, and actually are there bots? Like, can you have like AI bots or do you have to play no. with other people? Yeah. You have oh, to wow. play with other people. Oh, okay. So like if you're playing completely solo, a lot of the things, at least for me, cause I'm new and bad, uh, it feels a lot harder than I think it's supposed to be. Mm. Um, but when you have like four people, um, you can, there's more room for you to be bad. And it's not like super obvious if you're not doing things, um, which is good for me because I'm still trying to figure out like what to do. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can kind of like sit back and let the more experienced people like do the heavy lifting. And you're just like, okay, I'm just going to like pick off things that are sort of behind you that you can't see. And you're still like doing something and you still get all the rewards and everything. So it's, it's kind of nice. I, <laughs> I will say not actively sabotaging. I one of the video game YouTubers that I watch, he does like a news thing every single week and he's been talking about hell divers. And um I, I will say that what they're doing, like in terms of like oh how do how do I wanna how do you put this in words? They're they're adding stuff into the game that they're not telling people about and people are finding it organically, and I think that's rad as hell. Is basically what I'm trying to yeah. get at. Like they they put stuff in that the community finds, like they put in um flying bugs, and even like the CEO of the game was like 
there's no flying bugs. Like this is a, you know, an, a, an attack against democracy to even assume so. And all, all this kind of cool stuff. And I'm like, that's sick. I love how they're incorporating like the gameplay narratively. Uh, they're progressing the game, um, you know, and not telling people about it. Like they'll do official patch notes and stuff. Um, they put in, they did, they just did an event with like mechs. So you can get like a mech suit and it like, there was like an in-game event that alluded to it. And then yes, after people completed the in-game event, they added mech suits to the game. I just saw a screenshot earlier of like someone on a, on a, on a car and they're like, apparently that doesn't exist. And everyone was freaking out about it. And they're like, no, this is not Photoshopped. It's, it's in the, it's in the game. So like, I think what they're doing is really cool. And it feels like that's the kind of stuff you can do if you're a game developer and you just really love games and it's not you're not being lorded over by some corporate overlord who's like you need x number of sales and a battle pass and all this crap um they're just like yeah, they're just absolutely. putting cool cool stuff into the game and i think that's 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 awesome so i haven't played it but yeah. it seems sweet it's been, it's been very fun so far um it's still like pretty easy um there's like nine different levels of like difficulty and i think i'm on like level four mm. um so it's still like pretty early days uh and of course like i was saying with other people that have been playing like you know that are higher level than you a lot of things become really easy um there was one where it's like the entire um the entire thing that i had to do uh or that we had to do our, our mission was just to kill a thing called a bile titan and it's like oh that sounds really crazy that sounds like it's going to be really difficult but there was somebody that was like level 50 and we were done the um <laughs> the requirement in like four minutes and yeah. i was like okay cool <laughs> we did it <laughs> yeah 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 but yeah it's cool nice. I, I dig it meanwhile i'm just yeah. right no, uh, if him. I was gonna say if I could if I could if I could get a group of people to play every like a you know we're gonna convene at this 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 day this time and this day on a Monday and we'll play for free a couple of hours or whatever then I would get it but I don't have that at the moment so hmm. and if it that's the thing with live service games you need to have the party to really enjoy it I think um, yeah. yeah but um, like yeah like for example it's like good. a lot of people have problems with with Diablo four but. Robin and I play Diablo 4 couch co-op on PS5, and it's just super yeah, fun exactly. to, to play Diablo with my partner. That that's just basically it. We don't I don't give a crap about like uh you know whatever the min-maxing season crap or whatever it is. We just play together. We usually complete the the whole season um journey journey thing. We get pretty close to level 100. Sometimes we get to level 100, we do the bosses and stuff, and we just have a good time. Um but if I if it was not that, I don't know if I would play it like you know mm -hmm. um that's why i like relink because it's basically like monster hunter but you have ai companions you can you can obviously most people play with other players but if you don't have other players you have ai companions you and you gear them up yourself and it's kind of this cool like little thing and the ai usually is pretty smart about not dying which is great they're just not very good at doing a lot of damage um but yeah anyway good good times Good times. Yeah, good times. Um, Arsenal step was probably probably more robust than the like, actual it's step. Like 20, it's like twenty minutes. <laughs> it's like twenty minutes. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, hey, you know what? If you edit your comment and include a, <laughs> include a video game if you that you're excited about. Um, yeah, sure. Looking forward to throwing pawns off a cliff in Dragon's Dogma. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, that, that's uh Living Legends podcast for this week. Next week we'll be back with more flesh and blood. Um going to be a, an exciting week uh next week I think. We'll we'll see if our predictions were, you know, bang on or if they were completely off and um you know, maybe, maybe somewhere in between, which is probably more likely. Um Yeah. And uh thank you all for watching, listening, being here, sharing uh your time with us. We appreciate it. And uh we'll go around mm -hmm. go around the table one last time and do a little sign off and uh you know, we'll start with uh, we're mixing up this time. We'll go with as first, as oh. shill sh your things. Sure, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm as from Go Again Gaming. So Go Again Gaming AZ on uh, Twitter, where you can find a variety of different things on there and thought processes. And then the YouTube channel is Go Again Gaming. And uh, as as I've shilled pretty much the last couple of weeks now, the league that means nothing is going to be a mainstay on the channel going forward. Uh, with season two definitely going to happen. Uh, it's just regular CC gameplay content with guest commentating over the top um so uh so yeah really enjoying that at the moment so go and check it out when you can but yeah I'll throw it over to bill from the spike feeders 
Hey, I'm Bill from the Spike Feeders. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me on social media websites at BillTSF. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube at the Spike Feeders Fab, where we do live edited gameplay content. Uh, I think we just released the final episode of a gauntlet with a uh, good friend of the channel and good friend of Az's uh, channel as well, Jay, uh, also known as Zen Much. State Fab on YouTube. Uh, I think we're. I think we just released the final game of that gauntlet, uh, so you should definitely go check that out. And then there's a new gauntlet that's going to be coming out. Uh, effective, I don't remember if it's going to be this week or next week. I think it's next week. Um, and that will be another series of five games uh, where I am active. I am active as the gauntlet man. Uh, oh. So I'm playing a bunch of different decks, uh, probably poorly, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you nice. should definitely go check that out too. Yeah, go check that out. And um, I've been Kel, also known as Red Zone Rogue. You can find me at Red Zone Rogue everywhere and um, talk about a lot of card games. <laughs> I talk about, you know, card games that I really love. And right now I'm very happy with all of the card game goodness that I've got going on. Um, it's one of the one of the best years for me personally for just card games in terms of just enjoying what, what I have the options for. I'm having an absolute blast, so... Um, yeah, come join me for some good times talking about card games. So, um, yeah, that's the podcast for the week. Once again, thank you all for listening. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll be back next week to talk about some uh, whatever happened at the Pro nice Tour. Week. Yeah, whatever Absolutely. the... Yeah, talk about how Yuki Lee Bender won it with Arachne. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, see you then. Bye, everyone.